First off, we want to um, come together and um, send up a prayer for my brother, Gene Don. I know he has a um, big thing coming up with the trial of his son. And also want to thank the Lord for we've had some adversity here with the thing that we're trying to do, but we're still sticking to what he told us to do. And so first off, I just want to thank God for that. And ask that he will go out and be favorable and give a favorable outcome for Gene and bless his family and keep him and cover him. And also that he will continue to bless us with people, whether people are here, but the ability to come out and do this and enjoy it and have fun with the people that are positive and supportive of us. And uh, in Jesus' name, I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I All also right. do pastoring part-time <laughs> yeah. at the Don't Blue Church. <laughs> okay. Shout out to man, man. <laughs> so okay are we ready to kick off okay well i just want to thank everyone for coming out and this is the live taping of the podcast and talk show excuse the duval and me where we do all things duval and we do it big and we do it because we want to see the city continue to grow and our branches reach out into the community and hopefully that we can begin to change the culture of the city in a positive way with our voices, with our time, and with our platform. And I just want to also start off by giving my girl, who always supports me, and um, she had to go back to Denver this week, but she's going to be coming back and hopefully joining us on the podcast to... Um, represent her book and go ahead and give some advertisement to that. And her name is Emil Henry, and her book is The Half Sister. And she was just here on her book tour this past Saturday down at FSCJ downtown. And she has written a phenomenal book, and I just want to make sure that I give a shout out to her. And you guys, please go on Amazon and check it out. And if you have something that you would also like to bring forward that you would like for us to highlight, please contact us at all excuse the Duval and me social media pages. All right, so let's just get on and start off. And thank you again for the cast being here. We have Jay the Great, we have Camo, we have Cap One, we got Young Blood who's gonna be joining us in a little bit, and we also have our distinguished guest again, Mr. Gene.com. Thank y'all for having me again. Thank you. And we are gonna go ahead and start off the question since the first ones are loaded towards him and his occupation. <laughs> yeah. Why don't DJs push more of Duval's homegrown talent? And the only thing that I have to say regarding that is because I attended Camo's album release party this Saturday, and that's something that I usually do not do is hang out past 11 o'clock at night. So to do that, it was a blessing to do so because... I heard a song of his, and everyone knows that I I didn't like the Gators before I started dating my husband or married my husband, who is an avid Florida State fan. Mm -hmm. But this gentleman made a song called The Swamp. And you said what? In The Swamp. And just commercial-wise, economic-wise, that would be such a great song to push for the state of Florida, for the city of Duval, mm -hmm. and for this man in the business. There you go, Duval. And it was just, I just was like, wow, that really needs to be heard and kind of pushed through the city. You know, I mean, you got Lil Duval making songs, and I'm not saying that everybody can jump up and do it, but you really made a good song that I think could carry the city and, and, and transcend past the city. But it's just very catchy. It's, it has a good tune, has a good beat, has a good vibe, and then it represents Florida, and we're about everything Florida and all things Duval, so congrats to you, and I pray that everything is well with your album, okay? And I'm going to turn it over to Gene to see what he has to say about that. So the, the, your question was, um, just to be clear, why don't DJs get behind like the, the home yes. talent here? Um, well, that's, it's kind of twofolds, but my, my first answer is um, 
there have been many, many cases where DJs have gotten behind um, home team artists here uh, in the likeness of uh, 95 South, uh, 69 Boys, um, Young Cash. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on where they've had DJ support. Let me break this up. Um, so then there's DJs who are not a part of the radio system, and then there are DJs who are a part of the radio system. The radio system itself is all programmed. It's not a matter of myself being a on-air personality and I can get my man's here song, get it, and just play it on the radio for a lot of different reasons. Uh, for one, there's a audience participation where if a lot of the audience don't know the record, they could turn the station. And the station is based upon ratings and listening and views and things of that nature and revenue. So that's why the program director is the person who actually gets the structure, they do research or what have you. Now, again, it's an old model because this is pre-social media, pre-YouTube, pre-Spotify, or any of the music streaming um, counterparts that you could use to access music from. Now with social media, it's so advantageous because it's not like Lil Duval did anything with Scan Design. He had a relationship with Snoop. He had a relationship with Ball Greasy. He utilized his social media. He leveraged it. He put the song out there. It caught fire. Yeah. Radio stations picked it up. They started playing. Yeah. And that's really the system of how how it works. Yeah. Right. Um, I do think here, though, there is a lack of support when it comes to DJs and um, unifying with the artists. But I'm going to tell you this. A lot of DJs have been burnt by artists that, you know, we start out on this trek together. We have a vision. You have a vision. And then we... We ride out together, and then the DJ will look back, and the artist isn't running as fast as he used to. Uh, presentation isn't there. I think Duval, in some um, aspects of artistry, some of artists, they lack originality. They, they want to sound like someone who's already out there. Well, it's too late. We got a T.I. Yeah. You know, we got a, a, a young thug. We got a, a whomever you know, that's out there. And I think because this has always been, in my opinion, a follow type market, until we produce more leaders yeah. to transcend this to a leader market where it comes to music, then we're gonna always find ourselves, we need to find our own sound. And I get it, you know, the, the bass era, you know, has transcended on, it's gone. But they were pioneers. They sold millions of records worldwide and even overseas uh, traveling. And they still travel now to this day to, to, to perform in other countries the records that those people still love. So um, I just think from a personal standpoint, we need to uh, identify our own sound, get us some, uh, our own identity, and then you know, support. We don't really support like we should, even in the artist standpoint, because, you know, he has a hit song that's doing numbers, but I'm not going to support him because my cousin rap. Right. And I right. think my cousin ride like pop. And, right. he, and he don't. Right. And so there's dissension. It's dissension there. So before we can actually point the fingers at the DJs, you know, let's create a unified front, and I'm gonna tell you this, hands down, I am a on-air personality, but you can't bring me your music and say, hey, Gene gonna play it for me, because here's what happens, um, in short. You give me your music, I can play it, let's just say I, I had the autonomy to play it, but you hadn't done the back-end business so that it would even benefit you or the company or anything like that. We can't look you up on um, the ASCAP, you know, you don't get any sound scan, you're not even registered or none of that. You just played it and the 14 to 30 to maybe the 50 people that you had listening at that time celebrated you. 
But after that moment, now what? Now what? Great example. Bread Boys. The Bread Boys had a mate. They, they, we still play that song to this day. Say no more. Bread Boys, they right here. Bread and fed. Hit. They got the uh, radio behind it and everything. What was the second single behind that? Can anybody tell me that? No, yeah, no fault, no, no fault to them. I have to charge it as being young in the game and things maybe not be moved, wasn't moving as fast as the song did. But you got to catch that when it's when it's hot, you have to catch it, and then you have to be working on a follow up. You know, I remember back in the day we could go buy an album, and even if we bought a single, it had a song on one side, and then it had the B side, it had another single. That was the record company's idea of the follow-up. Here, here's the first one that we're running out with. It's starting to get some radio spins. Here's the second one that we're going to hit you in the head with. And then after you have adapted to the two, we're going to release the album. Here comes the video for the first one. Here comes the video for the second one. We're going to let the rest of the album do what it do. And they own, they own now to the next album or to the other person that's on the label that's next up. And that's... That's the way it works. Um, I do think, though, there needs to be a lot more unity with it. I think now, though, more than anything, as artists, utilize the social media platform where you, you know, you, you're already independent. I look at a, a whole lot of artists that are on social media, they dropping videos, um, music content. They might post a picture with the music content. They're doing stories and all of that. And they just have a simple link where you can go access the music. You like it, you go to the link, you purchase it, that's supply. Um, and demand right there, you directly to the consumer. You don't have to run all and up down 95 from here to Maine, you know, on this radio station, that radio station. You got it at the click of a button. I agree with a lot of that. Um, me being from here, you know, uh, he always asks me all the time, Rodney, man, you sitting on so much music, and you just gave a perfect example of that. Like, yeah, you got songs that are great, and they are good, but at the same time, you have to continue to put in work because, yeah, that song's gonna be good, but it's gonna have its 60 seconds of fame and people are gonna be wanting more. And you gotta come harder than that one. Then you gotta come harder than this one. You know, that it's not really pressure, but it's consistency. Can you deliver? And going to Atlanta was like one of my greatest experiences in life when it came to music. I got to see Future before he made it. I got to see Mike Will and them and stuff before they made it. I got to see a lot of these guys that was grinding and that was hungry. But at the same time, they had the support of the city. They had the support of the older guys that were ahead of them. They had these guys behind them. They were a unit. When you went to the club, just to go to the club with no performances, I didn't hear Rick Ross. I didn't hear Lil Wayne. I didn't hear nobody, I heard everybody from the top all the way to the kid that's rapping in his closet. And it was love, you know what I mean? Like not saying that um, Duval don't show love to their artists. Um, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that we're not unified. They DJs, don't. DJs, DJs or artists, not, not completely. The only reason why I say that is because, okay, you got Chameleon, but it's other artists that love her, she loves them, but you'll never hear these people. They got songs, it's like she has songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Copywritten, pressed up, great presentation, but you'll never see it because right now she's the hottest thing buzzing in the city. So she's gonna get that, like you said, oh, Chameleon got this bumper, da -da, it's, it's like that instead of, yeah, man, she good too. Yeah. Or yeah, this producer's good too. Or yeah, that DJ is hot too. And we don't have that. In Atlanta, there's so many DJs. Yeah, you heard a drama, but you also heard a scream. You also heard of everybody else that's up there that's doing something. You know what I mean? And they work together. That's the small difference. And you know, yeah, they say it's about who you know. My sister been telling me to come to Gene for years. I ain't see Gene until I perform at a birthday party because I know that's the last person you gotta see. Before you go do anything, the radio is your last stop. It's not, it's not how it goes. A lot of people go about it the wrong way. A lot of people think that's the easy way out, and it's not. You got to put in work, word of mouth. 
I didn't have to say anything. She said it for me. You know exactly. what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. You know, at the end of the day, it's still unity. And if more 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 people say what she says, that makes noise for me. Not just Duval. And I appreciate the guys that come before me because I know that shit ain't happened overnight for them. You know what I mean? They had to work hard for that position that they got and that platform to build. They just didn't get a million followers overnight. That took years. You know, he was he that took uh MTV. That took him going on the road and, and doing things before it was even a light on him. You know what I mean? And I appreciate those people because you gotta work just as hard to get there. And it's hard to get there and stay it. So I'm proud of those people that's ahead of me. Chameleon, everybody else that done did it, cash. Everybody, I salute them because I know it's not an easy road to get there. So, appreciate that, Gene. Um, well, I know, like, with me and my boys who are not here right now and uh, want to sit in the audience when we um, attempt to rap thing, and I know it is. It's a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of work, man. And I know I had a lot of people like Gene who was still, he wasn't Gene yet, so, you know what I mean? But... You know, it was some people who dug us, some people had, you know, feedback for us, but I think for us, we were lazy. We thought, like, if we get this one, like, just gigantic, just head knocking in, the city just going, oh, that's my homeboy. He went to Reigns. He went to ball. And it, it's not like that. Like he said, it's a lot of – Jacksonville in itself, to me, has a problem with supporting other people while we still getting our thing done. It's like – we can't have people close to our lane. You know what I mean? It could be a four-lane highway, but we want to drive all four lanes by ourselves. You feel me? We just bogart in every lane. It's like, bro, if you got your lane, do your lane. There's plenty of room over there for that man to ride alongside y'all. You know what I'm saying? I understand that the industry is, you know, competitive, and that's part of the nature of it. But like he say, with Atlanta, trap music was a whole vibe. It was a sound. You had, you know, it started, now they argue or whatever about Tip or whoever started, but you had Tip, Jesus. Every time you looked around, somebody was busting you in the head, and they basically, like he said, they had a sound. Well, Memphis, when they came out, 8-Ball and all them, yeah, they always had a sound, a vibe that represented the city. And that's one of the things that I regretted about us that I was trying to get over to my guys that, man, if we get a, you know what I'm saying? Duval, we ready to pop, but people from Duval always felt like they had to go down south and come back. You know what I mean? You know, or go to Atlanta or go to VA or wherever and come back with that scrimp to try to really carry it. But the thing about it is it's kind of good. My experience with it is kind of it's, it's, it's a great experience to get out of the city. And the reason why I say that is because and believe it or not, you're embraced more outside of your city than you are in it. Yeah, no doubt. I can I can say when I went to Carolina, I had white people in there. Oh my God. You know, it was a different energy. It was a different yeah, everything. Yeah. And when you see that, that makes you feel even more confident to do yeah. what you're doing. You know that you're doing something outside of your city and other people resonate to it. And when you come back, you know, um, like, I, you know, you hear a lot of things, you know, hey, Rotten be pump faking, Rotten be doing this, Rotten be doing that. But at the end of the day, yeah, bro, but I'm putting in work. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? You got a boss to answer to. I do what I love every day, every day with no nobody to answer to but myself. And if yeah. I don't put in the work, then I'm letting myself down. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. That's right. So, like I say, man, sometimes it's good to get out the city, though, you know, just to see what what's my measuring stick. You know yeah. what I mean? And get that experience. And that experience is good, you know, because it's love. When people, other ears hear your stuff, when you come home, now it's more embraced, more people are watching. I get more people saying, man, bro, I done seen you on this, I done seen you on that, I seen you on, yeah. the, I seen you on the podcast, yeah. Yeah. I seen you this, that, because now they see that you're moving. They're watching, they might not hit like, they might not comment, yeah. but you, they see that you're all over the place. And that's, that's, I think that's probably one of the better moves you can make now versus then, you know what I mean? Now, it, back then, it was really more about your turf. Yeah, You know yeah. what I mean? I and, and what you put in your backyard, so. When you say something about that. Because I remember seeing the stickers when we were talking about Amigos everywhere before they blew up. 
they came through here so much. I kept saying, who the heck is Migos? You know, they kept getting out. They kept going on about until they actually blew up. And not saying that that's necessarily going to always produce the same thing, but you have to be consistent and you have to try to give it your all. And they, I will say that from what I've experienced from them, they gave it their all. With Ball Greasy, the stickers and everything on everything. He was out there. Little Duval ended up catching up with him, and they blew up. So you do have to be out there. You do have to have a, a lot of exposure, and you do have to put a lot of work in. And I just wanted to say that. You did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't start with me. Well, that will also lead into our next question. What will it take for our city to be the next music mecca, or just mecca in general? And we used to be the 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 um, Hollywood of the South, Jacksonville. Okay. And you want to be an entertainment mecca? Yes, and an entertainment mecca. I, that's something that I believe we can have. We have an NFL team. Yes. You know, we, we great we, weather. Our, our name stays in the in the press in regards to that or the city or something going on, but there's nothing being produced to me in the city that's driving a force for the people of the community, the common man, and how can we bond that thread, how we're connecting with you, how we're connecting with Gene, you know, the, the guests that we're having on. We're we're spreading our tentacles to say that we're here, we have a voice and Let's stick together. Let's help each other. Let's speak to, in, into each other and, and, and continue to move on. But what do you guys think that it would take for it to be an entertainment mecca? Um, for me, one of the things it's going to take is some um, unity with black and white. Yes. Um, I think the city can become more of a destination if we uh, put more things in it that attract people from the outside. I mean, if we want to go to theme parks, where do we go? We go to Orlando. Um, that's something that within itself, if you go to any one of those theme parks, you look around, you see everybody there. There's every different walk of life that you can, you, that you can think of. It's, they're, they're, they're everywhere. We generally don't, don't have that um, here as something that I can say that can bring, you know, a social unity together where everyone can be a part and there's no you know color division because even though we're free to go everywhere we want there's still that unspoken line yeah. you know we all get along fine at a jaguar game you know it's not no issues yeah. but when they go back to their habitat and we go back to our habitat yeah. and then, you know we're not going to see them again until yeah. the next home game if you're lucky you uh, to have a seat five. you high five and you buy right correct so um i think um, from a music standpoint, we just going back to what I said originally. We just need to develop a sound that is that identifies with us. It's, it, it speaks uh, for us. Even uh, Jermaine Dupri said in Atlanta, he had the the pop side of Atlanta pretty good with the artists that he was working with. But it wasn't until Outkast and Dungeon Family showed up they actually gave that underground feel for Atlanta because the artist that, you know, Dupree, and this is no dig in him, he, he did a lot for the city of Atlanta. He actually put the flashlight on Atlanta, but when it became a voice for guys like us from, you know, a, that have like a street background, to identify with the music, it was Outkast and the Dungeon Family and everything that they were organizing noise was doing over there. They was started making music that was appealing to that audience, so it still unified the two. I think other places, the artistry seem to be a lot more in unison with each other. Like they support each other. They they don't mind hopping on different songs, whether it's R and B or or, or hip hop or whatever. You know, they they seem to work a little bit more together. And I think you know we need to we need to become a little bit more inclusive with that. I think it starts at the top too. Um, I don't believe in none of our city leaders. Um, I haven't really seen nothing that they've done over the last 10, 15 years uh, to improve our communities all the way across the board, but one side of town. Um, like, I remember when they redid, like, Edgewood, you know, they redid Win Dixie and made the place look colorful, but since then, I was legit. I was probably like 9 or 10, and I'm 35 now. 
and, and, and it's, it's everything is run down. And it's like where, you know, all these people t say these things, and it doesn't matter about Democrat or Republican or whatever the heck they want to do, but nothing's being done. And I think that starts at the top. You know, that's why there isn't the things that we do need to be uh, what we need to be. Um, it starts at the top. You know, we looking at, um, like I say, man, it's all about your son. You know, your fam my family knows a lot about your family and your son. Um, sorry about that. You know, that's that's tragic, you know, but it's happening way more often now than it's the kids. You know, it's not, it's not even uh, adults no more. Like you know, it's it's crazy. It's domestic. Dom even domestic disputes getting out of out of control. Um, but again, that starts at the top. You know, our shelf is a joke. Our mirror is a joke, and I'm not afraid to say that because there's been no results. Um, Shad Khan was trying to get downtown to make it look a little better, but they're doing everything they can not to let this man do anything. Why? Is it the color of his skin and he got money? You know what I mean? What is it? If somebody's trying to do something that's going to benefit the city as a whole, why not let them do it? And he has his own money to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it doesn't make any sense. You know, why is the city so shut down? You can only look at the top, the people that's above everything else, keeping us from doing that, from growing. It's like, do you want to continue to see this? happen i mean nobody really even voted the last term if you looked at the numbers it wasn't really a good turnout yeah, and these yeah. same people are pretty still much here. knew what it was you know right I mean? once they uh had what old girl name was i forgot her name at the time yeah anna broche once you you seen the ticket you knew what it was you know what i'm saying it wasn't really no point i mean you should still, I believe, if you have the right and ability to go vote, go vote just because our ancestors and what they went through for that. But we already knew what it was. You know what I mean? Lenny Curry was doing a victory lap, basically. I mean, really, he, he didn't campaign nothing. All he did is come out and say, she dirty. And then he just started doing the victory lap after that. He was acting like he had won. And me before Promoting the they same voted. Video. Straight up, bro. I, it was like, it was crazy. So... I mean, to me, the whole thing with the city, um, like I said, we got a weird vibe here, being that I done went other places, you know, from in college and hung out with my boys and, like, spent real deal time in they cities and Tampa and even Tallahassee. It's a different vibe here, man. I don't know what it is. It's like we so separated, and the only thing that brings us together is, like, concerts and events. And we come out, and a white dude will be over there, and he'll be your best friend while you at this event. Till you almost be like, man, white people cool. I'm gonna find me a white friend, bro. <laughs> like for real, I love this guy. <laughs> and then, like, yeah, yeah, Monday you'll see one of them. You'll be feeling your white guy, but hey, buddy, look, yeah, yeah <laughs> crazy yeah. give you the salt face. Now you like, okay, all well, right. they all ain't the same. You know what I mean? I mean, maybe they feel the same way about us. I don't know, but. I think that, like you say, that's where it all starts from, man. We got to have unity in the city before we can take it to another level and accomplish things bigger than, you know, just our average goals. And it, it filters down to everything to me, you know, politics, economics, with the Jaguars and what they doing as far as getting the city and getting things done. Because like you say, to me, I think Shard really, he has a... Not so much in an elitist approach, but he balling. I don't want to hang out here. It's dirty. It's dusty, man. Build me something around here where I can come bring my friends and we can show off. Here go my little team. This is my little investment. This is what we do over here. Welcome to Duval. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> to make them come back and say, oh, I want to spend some money and invest here, man. I seen Sean. It was a little nice. You know, the beaches, but... Just like when we had the Super Bowl here, the only thing we pushed was, oh, we got the beach. beach. But the beach is like two hours away from the stadium, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and then when that traffic came, bro, yes, people ain't have hotels. They were getting stuck on the ships. It was horrible. And you seen they ain't thought about coming back here for a Super Bowl since, my boy.